Painting Hamden. I'll be your teacher today. We're gonna to paint this beautiful painting here uh, called Aurora Borealis. And it's kind of a different one. And I'll tell you why it's different when we get into it, um, which makes it a little unusual and kind of fun. And we're gonna be using acrylic paints today. If you're using the kits from our studio, uh, then you have primary colors in your box. If not, go ahead and make sure you have primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. And then we'll, we'll also be using white and black. You don't need this much paint. I poured on way too much paint. I might paint another painting tonight after this with this paint. So don't worry if you don't have this much paint on your, on your palette because you won't need that much. We will be using quite a bit of black though. All right, so we also are gonna be using three different sizes of brushes. I have a large, a medium, and a small. Anything else that you have? Great, that's just more fun for you. We have some napkins and I'm wearing an apron. Please be sure to have an apron on. Acrylic paint is permanent. It will uh, stain your clothes. So we wanna be sure, uh, be sure that we uh, don't get any on our clothes if we can help it. So I'm gonna pick up some water from my water jar and I'm just gonna cover the entire canvas with water, plain old water. Just plain old water. And I'm doing this because Denver's a really dry place. And if you're in Mississippi or Louisiana or Miami or someplace where it's humid, you might not need to do this step. But in Denver, paint dries out pretty quick, about five to 10 minutes with a thin coat. So I wanna make sure that my canvas is hydrated so that my paint will move smoothly across the canvas. If you do get any paint on your clothes, let me tell you how to get rid of it or on your cat or on your tablecloth or God forbid on your computer keyboard or anyway. So what you'll do is if you get some on you, just take a clean napkin and pull it off, blot it off, don't rub it in. And then you take some dish soap like Dawn dish detergent and then you rub it in directly into the spot uh, and then put it in the hottest water that that garment will allow. If it's in your carpet, um, same thing, you're gonna have to use some uh, dish soap and then um, uh, hot water. And I would do it uh, before it sets. If it's on your cat or your dog, you'll have to give them a little bath. All right, here we go. So this painting, normally when we're at the studio, um, we normally paint the background first. And this is the only painting out of 500 paintings that we have here at the studio where we're gonna paint the foreground first. Pretty crazy. Uh, so we're gonna, it's kind of a fun one for that reason. So we're gonna paint the back, uh, the uh, foreground first, and then we're gonna go backward and paint the black. The first thing we're gonna do, and this is, there's pretty much two big steps to this painting. The first big step is we're gonna put in these colors and we're gonna put them all over on our canvas. And it's gonna take a little while and that's cool, that's fine. And then we'll take a break. And then the second big step will be, we'll put in our black, uh, uh, we're gonna add the negative space. So <laughs> when I say negative space, I always think of Eeyore, you know, like someone who sucks the air out of the room. And that's not what I mean at all. It's just the, the, the sheer blackness of the dark sky. We're gonna put that in next, last. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my big brush and on one side of my big brush, I'm gonna put white. On the other side of my big brush, I'm gonna put blue. And I'm going to use that blue to streak on some light blue streaks. And I'm gonna skip they're gonna be kind of like stripes almost. And Nancy, these are the largest brushes? I use my largest brush for this, correct. Great. So blue on one side of your brush, white on the other. 
And I'm gonna make some streaks, but not everywhere. Just kind of randomly. And I will paint the sides of my brush. Pardon me, the sides of my canvas. I told you that poor painting does something to my brain. Painting the sides and the top and the bottom of my canvas. I'm going way up here and I'm also covering that. The reason why I'm covering, I'm painting on the tops and the sides and the bottom is that way it's going to make the painting look like it was painted all the way around and then put on the wooden frame. And if you do that, then you don't have to buy a frame. It'll just look finished without a frame. And uh, one that's a little more modern looking and it's also uh, cheaper, you'll save, you'll save money. So these, notice these are not perfect. They're not the same. Some are thin, some are thick. Um, they're not, you know, they vary. They vary a lot. They're kind of in random places. That's, that's a good thing. Make sure that you don't blend those in too much. We want it to look streaky and messy. These are going to be our Aurora Borealis in the background. And I'm not even going to clean that blue off my brush. To be honest with you, the amount of paint I have on my palette is enough to paint probably six of these. Uh, that we, we really won't use that much paint of the colors. I didn't clean the bottom of my brush. But what I am going to do, as long as I have that blue and white on my big brush, the bottom three inches, I'm going to make that go back and forth because that's going to be our snow. And I'm going to pick up more white and leave it streaky, let it be streaky but I'm, I'm adding more white to it. So it's the same kind of streaks, but at the very bottom, it's going across horizontally instead of vertical, vertically. And it doesn't have to be straight because we actually want it to be a little hilly. When people paint snow, they almost never paint it white. It's usually some kind of off-white, either light blue or light pink. Usually not yellow, because we know what that means. But snow usually has all kinds of colors because it reflects the colors around it. And once again, I'm not even cleaning my brush and I'll, I'll tell you why in a moment. After I give you time to do this, then you'll see why I didn't clean my brush. But if you wanna clean your brush, you can clean your brush, no problem. You just don't have to. I'm just adding a little white between my bands of blue and white. You don't have to do that, but it's just gonna give a little more slipperiness to the part we'll do next, so. So 
So I'm just gonna give you more time to do that, okay? All right. You guys are doing a great job. It looks great. Looks awesome. All right, remember when I said I wasn't gonna clean my brush? I didn't clean my brush just because I can dip it into my water jar just to pick up a couple of drops of water. And then I'm gonna take a little bit, oops, knock the camera. Take a little bit of my blue and a little bit of my red. And what I'm going for is purple. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my white and mix that in. And depending on the color red that you have or the color blue that you have, one may overpower the other. Um, I'm using magenta, which is not the strongest red out there. And um, the blue is taken over. So I had to add quite a bit more red. I don't, I try not to add any more paint than I absolutely need. I don't wanna use all my blue and all my red because I wanna leave some for later if I need it. I just mix what I think I'll need and then I can always increase it. So my purple is not gonna look the same as the purple on the canvas just because I have a different shade of red or a different shade of blue. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it and see what I, what I can get. Yeah, it's okay, it's not good, it's not great but it's not as vibrant as that purple, but it's okay. So depending on the paints that you're using, and I, I don't remember if you guys picked up kits, um, but it, you know, the, the purples can vary and I'll tell you why. Oh, by the way, anything that we hit down here with uh, the paint, we'll just cover up the snow later, we'll fix it later. So I'm just taking that purple that I made and I'm putting it in those streaks, maybe some up, some down. I'm not filling in all of the space because I still need room for green as well. But I am adding it, you know, quite a few places. I, I was gonna tell you that the reason why the blue the purple may look different uh, than this one. We have about 500 different paintings in the studio and we have probably five shades of just purple paint. We have about 10 shades of blue. We have cobalt blue and primary blue and cerulean blue and phthalo blue and um, uh, ultramarine blue. And so it's kind of arbitrary which one we pick to put in the kits. Uh, you know, we try to pick one that people can use for a variety of paintings, um, but I never really know for sure exactly which one they used in the originals. But anyway, it's still gonna look great. All right, so I'll give you a moment to just do this. While you guys are doing that, I just wanna tell you that it's really a great idea to wash your brushes a lot. I let the water do all of the work when I paint. And what I mean by that is I swish the Dickens out of them. And for a couple of reasons, one, it's good for your brushes to be really clean. They will dry out and get ruined if you let the paint uh, dry on them. The second reason is if you rinse them a lot, you won't have to use a lot of napkins. I'm always concerned about the environment. I wanna make sure that um, I don't use any more napkins than I have to. So if I let the water do the work, uh, then all I have to do is use the napkin to really check it. <laughs> when, uh, when it's not pandemic time, we usually have a ton of people in here. You'd be shocked at how many napkins we go through because people think that it's oil paint and you have to use a lot, but you don't. Acrylic is great that way. If you have any streaks that are really big and bold like that and you're not sure you like it, you can always go back and break it up with a little white You can do anything, it's your painting. And no one will ever see the original, they'll just see yours and they'll think you're a genius.
All right. The next step, when you're ready, and it's okay if you're not, is I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of blue. And I'm gonna make a green. And this green, I'm gonna to try to go for a minty color, but again, depends on the yellow, depends on the blue. But that's what we're going for. A minty looking green to the best of, that we can. So far, so good. And that's gonna require adding a little bit of white. And then in your white spots, just find some places where you can streak in some green. You don't have to fill out your white spots, but just add some green. This painting kind of reminds me of old lady candy. When I was growing up, there was this lady who lived across the street. She had these um, kind of like peppermints, but they were like rolled, um, rolled kind of lacy looking candies, old fashioned candies. And they had colors like this. And they, they came in a can at Christmas, I think. Maybe you know what I mean. Yes, I do. Good. All right, so I'm not gonna overdo it because I don't wanna cover all my white. I wanna leave some white there too. So after we do this, we're gonna need to let this painting dry. So once you get this covered, then let's take a 10 minute break. And, and remember, you need some white. So we have white stripes, we have blue stripes, we have purple stripes, and we have green stripes. And they're not really stripes, they're more like streaks, they're streaks. So we have all four colors of streaks. Now you'll notice that you know we didn't put orange in there. If you if you combine cool colors and warm colors and they start to get together and hang out, you'll end up um, kind of muddying the whole thing up. So we're kind of sticking to the cool colors um, for a nice snowy look. So uh, let's let this dry for at least five minutes, maybe 10, okay? Okay, so. We can still let this dry. I don't know about you, but mine is still pretty wet. And the way I, there's three ways that I know to see if something is still wet. One is if you put it right under a light, if it's still wet, it will be shiny. It'll glisten, right? Like a wet sidewalk. That's the first way. The second way is if you turn it over carefully and then you touch a dry part and get the you know, kind of get a feel for that temperature. And then if you go to the wet part and it's cooler, then you know, <laughs> sorry. One sec. <laughs> All right, then you'll know that it's still wet. It's gonna show um, your personality, it'll be fine. <laughs> it's got some interesting splatters now. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, um, so that's the second way. The third way is if you pick it up and rub it on the person next to you and they scream, then you know it was wet. So I don't recommend that way during COVID because you may have to live with them for the next four or five months. Um, so I do not recommend that way. All right, so uh, be, I'm gonna keep letting this part dry, but I can start on these little trees. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 
the finest little brush that I have, a detail brush. And I'm going to use white paint to start because I can always, if I don't like it, I can always change it easily if I start with white. And I can, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna outline to the best of my ability, these three trees. So tiny little brush with white paint on it. And I'm going to, for here's, here's mine first. I can do it in front of the camera close so you can see. And I'm going to kind of just zigzag back and forth the shape of a tree. And since I'm doing it in white, I can always change it because when you have a streaky background with white, then you can just make it into streaks if you don't like it, right? So I have something resembling a tree there. I'm not gonna be a perfectionist about it, I, I could, but I'm gonna try not to. All right, so there's my first tree. And then I'm gonna put in another one over here. It's gonna be shorter, so it's kind of a small, medium, large. So this one, same thing. Now I'm just doing these little rectangles. If you don't wanna do it that way, you can do any way you want to make the shape of a tree. If you wanna just, here's a baby, if you wanna just scribble like that one, you could do that. That's okay too. You do you, because you're the only one who can. All right, so I've got three different trees, three slightly different styles, that's okay. Might loosen that one up a little bit. But the general idea is zigzags, and then it, they should get wider as they go down, like a tree would, like a pine tree would. These are evergreens. Don't know where, maybe it's Colorado, maybe it's, uh, you know, it's got northern light, so it's probably more like Minnesota or Alaska or North Dakota or someplace really cold. Oops. All right, we're going to go back over those with black, uh, but I just wanted to show you we're basically outlining it, and then I'm going to let that dry a minute. I'm going to clean my brush, and I'm going to let that dry a minute. I can change my trees quite a bit. It's okay, not a problem. Uh, but this is at least a placeholder, so I'll know where they are. At the studio, we have a few different ways to dry our paintings, uh, but fortunately in Denver, things dry so quickly, I, I rarely need to do that. Uh, one, you can use a blow dryer, two, a fan. We have both of those in the studio. Uh, but my favorite way is just to pick it up and just wave it around. That's my very favorite way because it's so dry here that that works like a charm. All right, cool, so we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna take a medium brush, in my case, a medium flat, and I'm going to pick up some black paint and I'm going to put that on the top and the sides of the canvas. And I'm gonna take it all the way down to where that snow starts. 
So just painting the tops and the sides. Oops, that's okay. Happy accident, no problem. I'm gonna check to make sure that's not my car honker. All right, so just painting the top all the way across. And you don't have to be neat because we're gonna be adding so much black anyway, it won't even matter. All right. And I stopped where the snow level is. Then I'm gonna clean that brush and I'm gonna go back to a small brush. So what I need to do now with my small brush, I'm gonna put some black paint on it. I wanna just kind of generally sketch on where that black would be, but I'm not gonna fill it all in. I'm just making vertical lines in black. I'm just kind of flicking up and down with it. And I know that what's above, I'm gonna fill in with black but I wanna make it so that it's very, very, very jaggedy. And so I know everyone has a different style. I know Joan's style is more neat and meticulous and uh, Kara's is a little looser. Um, and Nick, uh, yours is, your st uh, painting style is a little looser too. So just kind of keep that in mind that everyone has a different style, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm trying to mimic that general shape because this is going to be the part. This is going to be the part that we see. So if it helps you to understand that or to think of it as you go, you can fill in the top with black. It would just, it's just going to take a while. I want to wait a little bit to completely fill it in, I can come back later and touch up any streaks in there that are maybe messed up because they're still wet. Nancy, what size brush should we be using? Right now I'm using a small brush. Okay. And in my case, I have a small round. If you're using a flat brush or any other kind of brush, just turn it on the side so you're getting the skinny side. I hope that makes sense. Yes, thank you. But what you want is you want this super, super jagged look. It's supposed to look like stalactites or stalagmites, right? Inside a creepy cave. That's the, I'm flicking down from the top and letting it be pointy. So my brush, my paint is starting at the top and I'm just flicking down. I don't want a straight line. So if you're a meticulous person, you're gonna have to really fight the urge to keep these even. They're not supposed to be even. Out of 500 paintings in our studio, this is the only one we do this with, where we put it in the negative space. We had a teacher teach this one time and she cheated. <laughs> I guess she didn't know it was supposed to be negative space. So she used a black canvas and then she went in and painted everything white on top of it. And I'm like, uh-uh, sorry, that's cheating. I'm gonna try to keep an angle. So just go slow and careful and think about it. You wanna try to keep this general angle. But if you don't, no one will ever know. 
because they're never going to see the original. Like I said, they're just going to see yours. They're going to think you are a painting genius. Now, if a small brush is too small for you, go up a size. But I just want to be careful. And we have time, right? Just want to keep that curve. And then it's going to be the same thing on the bottom, exactly the same on the bottom, but we're going to flick down. And if you go into that snow, that's okay, don't worry. We can always let it dry and paint over it with more white, no big deal. Probably better to flick up on the bottom. Then you get those sharper points. And the sharper points is what I think really makes it look cool. But here's the tricky part. You have to avoid those trees. And if your trees are dry, you can go ahead and outline your trees, keeping the inside with those streaks. And then all the flicks, we have to be really careful around those trees and just come up from the trees. And, and just be really meticulous around them. I'll just go ahead and paint around them so I don't mess up my trees. Your trees might lose a little other shape. That's okay. These are weird shapes too. Basically, the trees, you're not really seeing a tree. You're seeing the reflection of the aurora borealis on the snow on the tree. And I'm just taking my time as I'm doing this. I'm just going slow and careful. That's why I'm using a small brush. It's easy to put black paint on, it's harder to take it off. So I'm just going slow and careful. I'm gonna paint around this little tree so that when I do the flicks, I won't ruin him or her or it or whatever they, you can name your trees if you want. Bob Ross said, every tree needs a friend. I think trees need lots of friends. But you'll see that when I'm going around the trees, I'm, I'm first I'm gonna outline the tree right over the white, but then I'm going to just carefully paint in around it so that when I do my, my painting, black painting flicks, that I don't have to uh, worry about messing it up. So I'm just gonna go around my trees first so I can be careful. Now, if you do make mistakes and you end up putting black somewhere you didn't mean to, that's okay. What we'll do is we'll let it dry and then we'll go back in and we'll paint white over it. But we'll have to be very careful to let it be 100% dry. You can paint black over slightly wet paint and it'll be okay, but you can't cover black with white if the black is 100% dry or you'll just have gray. So if you make a mistake, don't panic. I'll show you how to fix it, no worries. I'll probably make some mistakes. That's what happens. There's no such thing as mistakes, right? Just happy accidents. Speaking of happy accidents, I do teach Bob Ross classes 
I think we're the only cert, the only paint and sip in Colorado that has a certified Bob Ross instructor on staff. That would be me. Um, means I went down to Florida and trained for a few weeks and got my little certification. So I can teach oil paintings the way Bob would. That's fascinating. Is there like, is there a Bob Ross program? Yes. So when Bob was alive, uh, he died in 1995, but before he died, starting in about 85 or 87, I can't exactly remember for sure, but he started training his son to teach. His son was on the show and he trained some of his friends and uh, trained you know, family members and friends. And so they started this training program. They, I don't know how many they trained before Bob died, but since they started it, there's probably been a couple thousand people trained to teach, but most of them don't teach for long because most people who do it go down to Florida when they're retired and they get their certification as retirees. So very few of them actually teach for long. Um, there's only a handful of us in Colorado who teach. Um, I'm the only one in the South Metro area. There is someone up North I know, and someone on the Western slope, but there's not a lot of us. That is fascinating. Yeah, it's really fun. If you ever wanted to take a vacation in Florida, um, and it would be, it's three weeks to get your landscape certification, and you don't have to know how to paint, they'll te teach you, you know, there's, brand new painters, there's really experienced painters, uh, there's Bob Ross, kind of groupies to be honest with you, it's hilarious. Um, some of them, you know, have seen every episode and before they come down, uh, but it's just a wide range of people and it's really fun actually, really fun, I miss it. I used to go down there, well I, I do go down there every year, but because of COVID I couldn't. So I'm looking at mine and it's too uniform so if you're like me and you like to make things uniform, then we're gonna have to mess it up a bit. And when we mess it up, we wanna make sure we don't mess it up in uniform ways. So I'm gonna have some coming down more. Some going up more. I just wanna be careful that I'm not making a wall of colors. So you really can't tell unless you get back about five to 10 feet. And I recommend that anytime you're painting, whether it's acrylics or oils or whatever you're painting, even if it's a board painting, look at it from five or 10 feet away. If you were to go into an art museum and look at a master's work, you, uh, you know, you would, they would want you to be five to 10 feet away. If you put your nose in a painting the way we're doing it right now, the guard would get really nervous because you're supposed to really see it across the room. And uh, we can't see our own work from up close, but also we, we wanna be able to see it the way other people will see it. And it's rare that our friends come up and put their nose in our paintings. All right, so um, I think it's starting to look like Aur Aurora Borealis. What do you guys think? No comment, okay. I'll keep working. All right, so I mixed mine up quite a bit now and it's starting to look a little more jaggedy. So do get, um, I really do encourage you to get up and look at it from five to 10 feet away because you won't know. I, I have the luxury of I'm looking in my camera, um, in the lens of my camera. So that's helping me see that I, it was way too orderly. 
Um, but if I didn't have the camera here, I'd have to be getting up and looking at it from across the room a lot. But it's supposed to have this kind of um, EKG look, like a really scary, per like if you had an EKG like that, you would be scared, right? Um, but it's supposed to have that kind of really sharp, um, zigzaggy look. <laughs> Mine is definitely more. Um, I grew up in a family of nine kids, so I tend to do more is better. Uh, when that's not always true, sometimes less is better. But I tend to go big or go home. That's my style. Everyone has a different style when they paint. Um, you can see that mine is still wet in streaks, and yours probably is too, wet in streaks. We can let that dry, and then um, if you took away too much of your light and you want to put it back, you can just, you know, use, um, use a small brush and some white first. I'll just show you at some place, and then look for a dry place, right? And then you can just streak in more white and then a little color over it. And you can do that only, I would only do that in the places that where the black is dry. But um, don't worry, the bottom line is don't worry if you took out too much, which I kind of did uh, at first. Uh, because you can always come back in and add white with color streaks. And we could have done that to begin with, actually. But for me, I think it's kind of fun to experiment with this different technique that it's, um, you know, we were painting, we've been painting with negative space, which is kind of unusual.
Can I show you how to do a few little stones? Let's do it. Cool. All right. Easy stones would be take a flat brush. If you want big stones, use a big brush. If you want little stones, use a little brush. If you want medium stones, use a medium brush. And then with your stones, you're gonna take one corner of this flat brush, one corner, let's see, where's, okay, one corner, and put it in black. And then the, the other corner on the other side, put that in white. So it's not one side of the brush so much, it's, um, it's not like the whole, this whole side is white and this whole side is black, although you could do it that way. It's kind of one corner is black and one's white. And what I'm gonna do to make a stone is I'm gonna hold it so the white side is on top. And then I'm gonna, and the dark side is underneath, and I'm going to put the white on the left side and then I'm gonna curve and go like that. And I can do that a few times. The bottom line is I just wanna make it so that the dark is underneath. Um, and then I can come in with a smaller brush and go over that dark spot uh, with a little more white so that it's gray. So I'm gonna, one, a dip of white, a dip of black, and then I don't want them all to be the same shape. So maybe this one is bigger and basically all I'm doing is I'm making it so that the light is on the top. You could just paint a gray rock and then you could just put white on the top. That also works. This painting has three rocks and it doesn't really matter where they are. This one kind of looks like a turtle. I'm gonna have to tweak that one. But that's the general idea is just have the light at the top and the shadow at the bottom. So snow or light goes right on top, but the rest is gray. And that's just kind of. But it's messy. And then I can come in and mess up that white snow just so it doesn't look so obvious. Just use what's left on my brush of the white and just Scribble in there. Personally, I don't think it really needs rocks, but they're in there. And if you don't like them, you can just cover them right up. The bottom line is just that the snow is supposed to be bumpy and um, have shadow in it and not just be all white. And then Hopefully you saved a little bit of white. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the stick of any one of the brushes, doesn't matter which one, and I'm gonna put it in white paint and it's just the stick, not the brush. And I'm gonna put stars all over in the sky. And I'm gonna to try to cluster them together in some spots. I don't want it to look like a dots game with uniform distance. I just wanna kind of make them random. So maybe some are all alone, may, maybe some are you know in a cluster. If you know your constellations and you want to make a constellation, go for it. But I'm just going to kind of 
put them all over. And some of them are gonna be down here too. You can make them large or small or mix them up, some large, some small. At the studio, we have glitter. We don't put that in our kits, um, but you know, after your painting dries, if you want to uh, add, you know, a little glitter to your painting tomorrow, feel for, you know, knock yourself out, feel free. Um, this one does have a little glitter on it, and I think it looks kind of cool, actually. But it's not necessary to have it. Well, when you're finished, that was actually my last step was just the stars. And then you can take any color you like and then sign your name at the bottom. I write, I sign mine in the bottom right hand corner. And that, um, if you sign yours in the bottom right hand corner, then I'll remember that this was you when I see your painting in the Louvre. In the great halls of Europe. I'll say, I know that person. So I hope you thought this was a sweet little painting. I think it's a sweet little painting. And um, you can uh, be proud of yourself that you did a painting in negative space, which most people don't ever do. So we'll, we'll be here. Um, I, my husband's loading the, uh, the paintings on the calendar for January, and I'll be here every day. Um, whether people are registering or not, I'm going to be recording a whole bunch of paintings for uh, YouTube. And so, and we'll have painting kits. One thing that we're going to start doing, which is really cool and I'm excited about, is I'm going to start doing pour painting um, and pour painting kits. And oh, so I cool. think that's going to that's be a lot of fun. Yeah. What kind of painting? Four. That's Nestor and I did oh. that. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. C-O-R. Yeah, it's um. P O U R. P O correct. P O U R. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. We did them. Um, we made poor painted ornaments that way. We have a lot of poor painted um mm -hmm. ornament kits that we sold in December. Um, but now we're gonna do it on canvas, and that should be a lot of fun. So it makes really colorful, abstract little paintings. So that sounds like fun. We'll sign up for that. Yeah, breaking yeah. up our world a little bit in this cold, yeah, cold, sad winter. Yeah. All right. Well, once again, thank you so much for for painting with me. Thank you for planning this uh, fun paint night for your family, and and uh, I really appreciate your business. And thank I you. wish you guys good health. Um, for the remainder of this crazy time and that all of you um, have good health and yeah. And thank you, you too. Thanks.